Today we're going to have a look at another example of uh, branching and jumping instructions. Today we're going to figure out how to find the largest value in an array. So you can see I've set up two different values for the array R here. Uh, one's got some large word hex decimal values, the other's got small values. The small values are just there so we can test and see obviously what the answer is. Uh, then we have i, that's going to be our index, what it's going to tell us when we're at the end of the loop. That's what we're going to use it for. So let's get started. First things first, I want to load the address of the array, I'm going to put that in t0 <clears throat> and then I want to load the byte unsigned of course value of um, i, I'm going to put that in a0 because why not of course we use load byte unsigned because we don't want to extend the sign of it and then we want to load the word from t0 and I'm going to put that in a0 now you might ask why I'm doing that, that's because we want to assume that the largest value when we start this loop um, is at r0. So you've done this before in uh, classes like CS105 where you just assume that the first value is the largest and then you compare it against everything else. That's what we're going to do here. So that's why we do that. Now we start a loop. So what should I do at the start of this loop? Well, it'd be good to make sure that whatever value I'm going to use to increment through the array hasn't reached i yet because as soon as it reaches i that means we're past the end of the array that's why i is four there's four values in the array when we get to the third position we'll come back to the start of the loop first thing we should do is check that we're not equal to four if we are equal to four we should go to the end so i'm going to use branch of equal and i'm going to say that the value i'm incrementing is an a uh, two and i'm going to compare that to a one and if that passes i'm going to go to the end so that's saying if my index is at the end, then finish. Just jump past everything else and continue on. So uh, next thing I want to do is I'm going to increment A2. I mean, I'm using A2 just at the start because it's a value that's going to be 0 when we start. It's going to have a register value of 0. So I'll increment it immediately because I've already done the position 1 by assuming it's the biggest. So let's add 1. So because we've assumed that the first position is the largest, I don't need to check that again, so I'm going to immediately increment. So this will be fine in our first case, and then as we go through our loop it will be fine as well, because we've already got a value in A0 to compare against, so we don't need to check uh, again. Okay, so now that I've got that, what I should do is create the pointer that's going to put me to the next element of the array, and I'm going to use shift left to do this, and I'm going to shift left the value of A2, but I'm going to put that in T3 so that I can add it to something later on. So this is A2. I'm going to shift it left by 2. That's multiplying I by 4. So that's I times 4 to get the correct offset. And then what do I want to do? I want to add that value. Um, oh, I, used, I haven't used T2 yet. I don't know why I used T3 first. So I want to use the value that's in T3. And I want to add that to the value in t0. That's going to update the address that's stored in t0 to point to the next element in the array because obviously we want to keep incrementing. So this will give me a new value to look for. Um, it will increment past the previous position and we should be fine. So let's do the next part. The next part is where we load the word from this address. So let's put it in uh, a3. Um, yeah, we haven't used a3 yet. So let's load the value from t2, of course it's a pointer, so we need to use the brackets around it, and this has got our words, so now we can start actually comparing. So what we could do is we can do a branch of less than or equal, so if the value that's in a3 is less than the value in a0, then we just branch and go back to the start. So that should be a3, and a0, then we branch back to loop we go back up to the start because even though it's less than the value that we currently have is largest, we don't know that it's the last value in the array, so we want to go back to the start and keep going through. We just don't want to do what's going to come next, which is going to be setting A0 to be equal to the largest value. So the largest value in this case, once we're past this branching instruction, is going to be A3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to A0, add the value of 0, and a3. So this is going to overwrite the value that's currently in there by adding 0 to a3. We just get rid of the value that's in a0 and then we just jump back to the loop. Oh, that's a capital J, it should be a little j. Like that. 
And then at the end, I'm going to do the usual. I'm going to load an immediate value into uh, v0 of 34 to print out the hex value. And then I'm going to do a syscall. OK, so let's try this with the small array first and see if this works. This one should definitely bring back 6 as the largest number. If it does anything else, we should be a little bit concerned. So let's compile it, or assemble it even, and run our code. So there we go. We got 6 printed out at the end of the day. So let's try with the larger values. And what I'd like to do for this one is slow the execution speed down a little bit so that we can see what's happening a little bit more. Because what I want to take away from this is that the values that we've set up, although they just look like large values, they could be negative values. And that's going to be what we look at next week in more detail. So let's have a look. So you'll notice over here we're exchanging values all the time, but that's not tremendously helpful because it's hexadecimal. So we can see that seed bags is uh, the largest value. But let's change this to decimal values. Let's turn the speed down even more and see what's happening in our code. So you can see we're actually putting negative values into the value of a or the register of a naught, and then we're comparing everything else against this value, and this one does turn out to be the largest by virtue of the other ones being negative. So this is where you have to worry about whether you're using signed or unsigned values, and that's what we're going to be looking at in the next couple of weeks. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions about the video, please do let me know. Thanks.